Salams, you're watching the International Daily Roundup, People's Dispatch's selection of some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Italian students protest after the death of a 16-year-old in an accident. Australia moves to ban Hamas. COVID-19 worsens the homelessness crisis in Brazil. Our first story is from Italy, where thousands of students hit the streets in more than 40 cities on Friday against the flawed education policies of the Mario Draghi government. The students were joined and supported by trade unions and political organizations such as Potere al Popolo, USB Italia and C. Cobas. The protesters denounced the mandatory internship for students, the government's insensitivity towards the COVID-19 crisis in institutions, the spike in unemployment and repression. The protest took place after 16-year-old Giuseppe Lenocci was killed in an accident on Feb 15th while on his mandatory internship. This follows the death of 18-year-old Lorenzo Parelli on January 21st in a workplace accident also while on internship. Student and youth organizations had also held large demonstrations towards the end of January. The students and trade unions have also highlighted the issue of unsafe workplaces in Italy where a large number of accidents take place. The protesting students called for the abolition of compulsory internships, as well as the resignations of Italian Prime Minister Draghi, Education Minister Patrizio Bianchi, and Interior Minister Luciana La Morghese. For our next story, on Thursday, the Australian government announced its intent to ban the Palestinian resistance movement Hamas in totality as a, as a terrorist organization. Australian Home Minister Karen Andrews announced the decision claiming that, I quote, there is no place in Australia for their hateful ideology, end quote. Hamas's military wing is already listed as a terrorist organization in Australia. After announcing the ban on Hamas in totality, Australia joins a small set of Western countries such as the United States, the United Kingdom, the EU and Israel who have done the same earlier. Israel welcomed the Australian move with Prime Minister Naftali Bennett thanking his Australian counterpart Scott Morrison. Hamas controls and administers the Gaza Strip with a population of over 2 million people. Israel has already imposed a severe land, air and sea blockade of Gaza, turning it into the world's largest open-air prison. The move to ban Hamas was opposed by Australia's Palestine Advocacy Network, which claimed that, I quote again, this designation will not act as a deterrence against terrorism, but would, would damage Australia's capacity to play a constructive role towards Middle East peace, end quote. A similar decision by the UK late last year had also been condemned by Palestinian rights groups. And finally, we take a look at the impact of COVID-19 on homelessness in Brazil. According to official figures, 24,000 people lost their homes in Sao Paulo in 2019. A 2021 survey by the state movement of the homeless population found that the number had risen to over 66,000. The profile of people who became homeless also changed. Recent data shows an increase in the number of families living on the streets. Black or brown people form a majority of those who are unhoused. Community organizations and activists have also warned that many people are left out of official surveys. Underreporting, in turn, has led to people being excluded from government benefits as well. Here's a video from Brazil de Fato on the state of homelessness in Sao Paulo. We used to work as collectors of recyclable materials and cardboard. While one kilo of these materials could be sold for one real, we managed to pay room rent. But then the price of cardboard fell to 40 cents. We either pay the rent or eat. In the city of Sao Paulo, La Cielia and Almi are two examples of the new profile of homeless people during the pandemic, people who are on the streets for the first time in their lives. I never imagined this. The reality is cruel. You can't even think of leaving the place for a while, or you're gonna lose the little you have. According to data from Sao Paulo City Hall, almost 32,000 people are living on the streets. It represents a 31% rise in the last two years. To some movements, this figure can be even bigger. Artist and sex worker Kundalini has been living on the streets for a month. My mother said to me, I don't want you to die, and I'm not gonna die, I am not. That's how I try to emphasize myself as a queer person who will keep on living. I'm going to surpass 35 years old. One year ago, Antonio was fired from his job as hot carrier. 
Today, he and a colleague with whom he worked have been sleeping under the murky. They try to save some money to rent a room. During the day, we go to the neighborhood, and during the night, we collect cardboard here because there's a lot of it here. Some people want to keep begging, but we don't. We want to work, provide for ourselves, so as not to beg. My biggest fear is the discrimination people have against me. Some homeless people help you with blankets or any other thing you need. But the way people look at us is the worst thing. That's all we have on this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more on all of these stories, you can visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and do give us a follow on the regular social media platforms. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.